Y Tu Mamá Tambien is the 2001 Mexican coming-of-age film that takes a particularly unorthodox approach on the classic road film genre. The director Alfonso Cuaron intended for this movie to be quite explicit in communicating a real and genuine setting, accompanied by characters with each of their own brutally honest interwoven stories. The film combines comedy, drama, and sexual themes in a, into a narrative that provides unexpectedly extreme depth to our protagonists. He watches the two teenagers, Julio and Tenoch, go on a trip across Mexico, along with a troubled older woman named Luisa. By the end, each character learns off of each other before their relationship naturally dissolves over time. A similar conclusion to that of other coming-of-age films. Alfonso Cuaron put forth a revolutionary-esque film that portrayed the country-specific setting of Mexico while keeping the film internationally fluid, which resulted in its widespread success. The alteration of the genre through cinematic style reflects much more about the influences of globalization and national identity than the narrative context of the film itself. The film was made to be less cultural specific by focusing on dramatic topics like sexuality and adolescence rather than divulging into the context of the setting. However, Alfonso Cuaron made that context apparent while leaving out specifics to allow the audience to either use their imagination or ignore it. He implements a style of narration which gives details that are somewhat relevant to the story while the camera explores the surroundings. It is a simple style with no background audio, no distractions from the narrator's voice. Cerca de las cinco, de noche rompió un faro del coche al llegar a su casa. Much of the film uses diegetic music from the car radio to the track player in the Oceanside Bar. The camera will often drift away from the protagonists to show us something that would normally be off screen. It particularly lingers on separated scenes where either something political or cultural is occurring. This would be the context of the setting that is intentionally limited to the audience. These elements provide a realist experience in a style that what some would describe as documentary. Before filming E tu Mama Tambien, Cuaron already had previous experience working on American films such as 1995's A Little Princess and 1998's Great Expectations. He carried his knowledge of Hollywood drama over to Mexican cinema while using an aesthetic style that can be enjoyed by international audiences. In an interview, Cuaron described cinema as an abstract art that does not hinge on context, but on emotion over time. While writing Y tu Mama Tambien, he at first considered the comedic Hollywood version of a teen drama. He had this to say. And I'm glad we didn't do it. Because we start talking about that and, and, and we start talking about how, by itself, how un uninterested it, mm. uninteresting it was. It was more interesting to explore who these characters were mm. and to explore how their social class mm. and the social context inform characters. Yes. And how these characters, by the same token, inform that environment. A film study agreed with what Kiran had to say, saying the hybridization of genre configurations may have aided the popular acceptance in the U.S. His awareness of the relationships between elements in film is what sets his work apart from most globalized films. The way he differentiates from the normal genre in order to provide a national identity is humbling. It does not overstep any boundaries. Everything is kept in a balance for the sake of providing the same narrative to all varieties of audiences. People who watch Y tu Mama Tambien will most likely have their own separate impressions from this film depending on their attention to detail or general preferences. The flow of context and visual details in scenes may be overwhelming but not entirely confusing. Overall, the journey this film presents will entice and draw in anyone's attention no matter where they come from.